material to cover. But the question here is, is Jesus God? That's been a lot, a lot of people try to say nowadays that Jesus is not God. And they always have the, the normal questions like, well, if Jesus was God, who was he talking to on the cross and stuff like that? Well, uh, we're, we're not here to try to, I'm not trying to prove that Jesus is God. I'm trying to show you things that are in the scriptures. It's not my job to prove anything. It's the word of God that does it. And if you want to get an in-depth study of Jesus is God, go to Brother Joe Consoler's class in, <laughs> in Bible college and you get some in-depth, in-depth teaching on that, a whole chapter on that issue. But it is true that we see that Jesus is God in this day and age. You're going to get probably somebody at some time, it's unfortunate, but true, somebody's going to knock on your door and say, well, we're, uh, are we on up there? All right, I'm not getting anything. Am I, am I on up there, Brother Law? There we go. The Word of God can be trusted. And it's not just any Bible. It's the King James Bible for English-speaking people. The reason being, we need an authority. And that's where the problem is. It's not the, uh, well, it is the perversions. I call them perversions. And it's the reason being, when you go into a Bible bookstore and you say, I would like a copy of the Word of God, you know what they're going to say? They're going to say, which one? And then when it comes down to doctrine, they're going to say, okay, since Satan couldn't destroy the Word of God, the Bible said, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. God has preserved his word. And the reason being, since he couldn't destroy it, He's made different perversions so, so that people will say, well, I believe this and this in this Bible, this and this Bible, and this and this Bible, and this and this Bible. Well, these so-called scholars, anytime you read something, they'll have quotes out of one Bible and say, well, this is better said in this Bible, this is better said in this Bible. And then the question arises, well, where is the authority? Well, the authority is the Word of God, no matter how it's presented, God has preserved his word. And if he didn't, he would be negligent in getting his word out. We would have no, no chance of getting saved because the Bible says, being born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. And that word corruptible and incorruptible is very important. So anyway... Here you find Revelation 22, 13. Now, I've de decided to put all these verses up here because we've got so, so many of them. So you would have to look them up and take time to look them up. But also you have them on your sheet so you can go home and study these things. But the scripture says here, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. That's his name. That's that. He's the beginning He's the end. Now, that's pretty interesting, but to show you kind of an illustration why I believe the King James Bible is so important, here you go. Here's the beginning. And I wore my in the beginning tie to get a, get a theme here. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you'll notice, there's 10 words there, okay? All right, and the next, in the beginning, you'll find there is 17 vowels in this, in this sentence, all right? You'll find that there is 27 consonants, all right, in, in that portion of Scripture. In the beginning, God created heaven and the earth, all right? So we have an establishment as far as numbers go, okay? And remember, he's the alpha in the beginning and the end. Is that correct? So let's go to the last verse. The last verse says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. There's 12 words in there. But guess what? There is 17 vowels. And there is also 27 consonants. Well, that's pretty, pretty unique. But it's even more unique when you get to this next verse. In 1 John 5, 7. And this is where our theme is. 
For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. If you'll count them up, you'll find there is 22 words. The 10 of Genesis 1-1 one, one, and the 12 of Revelation 21. And then at 22. And then you'll find that there is 34 vowels. And you will also find out there is 54 consonants. And all three are one. Now that's very important. And I don't believe that's a coincidence. You can, you can say that's a coincidence all you want. It mathematically works out. And it is true, the word Trinity is not mentioned in the Bible, but the truth of the Trinity is taught. 1 John 5, 7 and 8, For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. But just as important is verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in the earth, the spirit, the water, the blood, and these three agree in one. So there is one God. Now, uh, it, we find that this is so. All right. Okay. The three is a trinity, just like the, the song says. Uh, God in three persons, blessed trinity. All right. Now, I cannot fully explain the trinity. But I can come close. I am a father. I have four children. I also am a son as well as every man in here. I also am a man. I have three aspects about me, but one person. But I just cannot separate myself until I die. I have a soul. I have a body. And I have a spirit. I'm made after the image of God. He has three persons. He has three entities about him that has special tasks. And that's why he's God. Now your soul goes to heaven. Your body goes to the grave. And if you're born again, that spirit guarantees you a new body just like Jesus Christ. So we find here that God is one person. Now, in Genesis 1-1, one, one, all right, it says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Notice that God created the heaven and the earth. He, here it states that it's God that did it. Notice also that the Spirit of God had moved upon the face of the waters. So both God the Father and God the Spirit were at creation in this portion of Scripture. Now, in Isaiah 40, okay, we get to this one. There are three things that God teaches man about, about himself. It's creation, conscience, and the word of God. Here in Romans 1, 20 to 23 says, for invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God used creation. Nature itself teaches you there's a God. And then it also teaches us here that in, in Romans chapter 2, verse 15, it says, which show the work of the law written to their hearts, their conscience also bearing witness and their thoughts the mean while accusing or else excusing one another. Our conscience tells you that there's a God. That's why when you grew up, you knew what was right and wrong. God put it in us. The Bible says in, first, uh, in John chapter 1, verse 9, that he lighted every man that cometh into the world. He gives everybody a measure of faith, according to Romans chapter 12. He gives everybody in their conscience. That's why you find the immigrant way, 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 or the pygmy somewhere, or some type of Indian tribe, they worship something. Because God instilled in them that they would worship something. 
So we find that these things are so. So here we go with the word of God. The Bible says forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. He settled the word of God so that you would have his witness that he is God. John 17, 17, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You have no hope without faith. The Bible says in Hebrews 11, 6, so then with, uh, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. He that cometh to him must believe that he is and he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Nobody goes to heaven without knowing the word of God or hearing the word of God. People I've heard all the time in my life, well, if he's really there, if he exists, would you come in my heart and save me? No, that's not what the scripture talks about. You're going to know who Jesus is. And not only you're going to know who Jesus is and what he's done, but you're going to find out that he is fully able to save the world. He is fully able to save the world. All right, 1 Thessalonians 5, For our gospel came not into your world only, but also power in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance. That's one of my pet verses here. As you know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. All right, now, Hebrews 11, 3, Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Yeah, good too fast here. All right. All right. Jesus is our creator. Look at Ephesians 3, 8, and 9. And to me, whom am less than the least of all saints, is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by whom? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ created all things, folks. So if God in Genesis 1-1 created the heaven and the earth and it says here that he created everything by Jesus Christ, who is Jesus Christ? All right. Now, Jesus created all things in Colossians 1, 14 through 17, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now look at this. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. You want to know how an atom stays together? It's by his word. We're all here because he said consist. We're in where he can move our fingers because God said brain. Tell the fingers to move. Tell the legs to walk. Tell the arms to move. We're all there because he said so. <laughs> I love that part. He said, okay, I'm going to create man. And he created man in his image and for him. Folks, if you can get a hold of that, if you can get a hold of that truth, then you would know that Christ is God. There's no if and buts about it. There's no other way it can happen. It has to be just like he said it would happen. There's no other way it can be done. So we find here a premise that not only God created it, but Jesus Christ in God's image created all things. Now, let's go on. We find here in, uh, what's our next verse here? Well, let me read this one to you. In Isaiah 40, 20 through 25, it says, uh, 
to whom then when ye liken me, or shall I be equal, saith the Holy One, lift up your eyes on high, and behold who hath created these things, that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by name, by the greatness of his might, for that he is strong in power, not one felleth. Now if you notice in that verse, whom then will ye liken me, or shall it be equal? He's talking about the Lord Jesus Christ here. Saith the Holy One. Who is God talking about here that's liking Him? The Godhead consists of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, according to 1 John 5, 7, and 8. Jesus then would but have to be the Creator. This is the, this is the Scripture that backs this up. It is the scripture that tells us that he is the creator. All right? We just saw that. Now, what does God himself say about himself? All right? God is the only Savior. In 2 Samuel 22, 3, that says, The God of my rock, in him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. So he's the God of my rock. He's the one that we're supposed to trust. He's our shield. He's the salvation. He's our high tower. In 2 Kings 13, 5, it says, The Lord gave Israel a Savior, so that they went out from under the hand of the Syrians, and the children of Israel dwelt in their tents as before time. God said he gave Israel a Savior. Who is this Savior? Jesus Christ the Savior. If Jesus Christ is the Savior, then he would be God the Son to answer the next verse. Psalms 106, 21 through 22. They forget God their Savior. They forgot God their Savior, which had done great things in Egypt, wondrous works in the land of Ham, terrible things by the Red Sea, here are the scriptures that points out that Israelite forgot God, their Savior. Then God would have to be that Savior, yes or no? Absolutely would. So if God is that Savior, then we've got to go on further. Isaiah 43, 3 says, All right. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for the ransom, Ethiopia, Seba for thee. The Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. The Savior is called God. All right, you go to Isaiah 43, 11. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me, now look at this, there is no Savior. Nobody else but God himself is the Savior. Here God declares himself a Savior, and beside me there is no Savior. If there is no other Savior than God, then how can Jesus Christ be called the Savior if he is not God? <laughs> this is good. Getting better. I like it. All right, Isaiah 45, 21. Tell ye and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared this from ancient time, who hath told it from that time, have not I the Lord, and there is no God else beside me. A just God and a Savior. There is none beside me. So when Jesus is here on the earth, there's no other Savior beside him. That makes him what? God. There you go. All right. Now, how can Jesus be called a just God and Savior? There is none beside me. God. How can Jesus declare himself as the Savior and God not be God? Easy. The Word of God. And guess who's the Word of God? Jesus. According to John 1.1, 1, 1, He is the Word. The Word declared Himself. God. Jesus is God. All right? Isaiah 49.26. Are we there? Yeah. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as with sweet wine and all flesh shall know that I the Lord and thy Savior and thy Redeemer 
the mighty one of Jacob. If God is the Savior and Redeemer, how can Jesus be called Savior? How can Jesus Christ forgive sin if he's not God? All right. Jesus said he was the Father. Did we miss one? All right, Jesus said he was the Father. All right. John 14, 10 through 11. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very works sake. John 14, 8 through 11. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father. It sufficeth us. Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He has seen me. Uh, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me. We just saw that. Or else believe me for the very works sake. All right, John 17, 11. Now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name Whose whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are. Very important verse. Jesus declares the Holy Father as one as we are. But see the word are? That's the plurality of the Trinity. It shows you that there is three persons in God. Now, God prophesied that he would come to the earth as the sacrificial lamb. In Genesis 3, 14 and 15, And the Lord God said unto the servant, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, above every beast of the field, upon the belly shalt thou go, thus shalt thou eat all the days of the life. I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed, it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. God prophesied that there was an enmity between Satan and the woman. It's a separation. Notice the word, thy seed and her seed. Her seed refers to the Virgin Mary who gave birth by the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit. Her seed, Emmanuel, is being interpreted God with us. Matthew 1, 20 through 23. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost, the third person. And she shall bring forth a son that shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from his sins. Thank, their sins. Thank God, thank God. And here's the prophecy that Jesus came. Did, but did G, was that the beginning of Jesus? No, he existed. We're going to see that in a little bit. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. All right. The Old Testament prophesied that Jesus would be God on earth and he would be the Messiah. All right. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. How do we know that? It's from the, the scriptures of Matthew. All right, Isaiah 9, 6. 
For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. You know, people, there's a organization, a false religion that says, well, it doesn't say Almighty God. Well, you're right. It doesn't say Almighty God. However, it does say the Everlasting Father. <laughs> so you can't get by by just saying, okay, that doesn't mean Almighty God. It means he's the Everlasting Father. And who's he talking about? The child is born. He's talking about Jesus Christ. All right. Notice Isaiah 7, 14, bear a son named Emmanuel, God with us. Notice 9, 6, a child is born unto us, a son is given. This is the prophecy of Jesus Christ's birth and notice. The mighty God, we just talked about that. I'm going to go ahead and pass that one by. Now here's another important one. There's a lot of false religions that try to say that Jesus Christ is Michael, the angel. All right? He is God in the Old Testament. He is not Michael, the angel. There is a separation in Revelation of Michael that's, uh, that fights with Satan and is totally separate from the Jesus Christ of the Revelation. But notice Hebrews 2.16. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Now we're going to get to this in a minute. That means Jesus Christ has two natures. He's God the Father is the divine nature. God the Son is the human nature. He has two natures. But he still existed. He existed from the very beginning. Now notice this. Jesus existed before the manger of Bethlehem. In Daniel 3, 20 through 26. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his arm to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And cast them into the fiery, burning fiery furnace. That's something how we know very well those names. of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But somebody, it takes a while to remember their Hebrew names. <laughs> this is the name that Nebuchadnezzar gave them. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and in their hats, and their other garments, and were cast in the midst of the fiery furnace. All right. Therefore, because the king's command was urgent, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down, bound into the midst of the fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astounded and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselor, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. And he answered and said, Lo, I see four men. They're having a cookout. <laughs> barbecue walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like what the son of god now tell me something if that wouldn't preach in the old testament like another group of people even in our group says that there is different they were people got uh saved different dip, different dispensations then explain to me how those people, especially the king, knew that this was like the Son of God. See, that goes along with Galatians chapter 3. It says, Christ and the gospel was preached to Abraham. No one gets saved outside of grace. No one gets saved outside of Jesus Christ. No one gets saved without the word of God and knowing that Jesus Christ is all sufficient. See? Nobody does that. They must know that he is all sufficient. What, what would be the purpose of Jesus, and you had to be saved by the law, if he existed in the Old Testament, what purpose would it be if he had to go to the cross of Calvary if it didn't take care of all things? 
getting me upset here. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. Notice the words. Servants of the Most High God. The Most High God was with them. Them in the furnace like the Son of God. Now, no man can see God's face and live. Yet Jacob stated he saw God's face. In Genesis 32, 30, it says, And Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen God face to face, and my life is preserved. This would have to be Jesus Christ because he can be looked upon and live. He is not a spirit, but a body with God inside of him. He existed in the Old Testament. When he passed by, he put Jacob in the, in the cleft of the rock, put his hand, and he said, okay, you can see my hinder parts as I pass. All right? Colossians 1, 12 through giving thanks to the Father, which hath made us meet, means accepted, to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Notice he hath made us accepted. That means when we were sinners, he had made us accept. Anybody existed when Jesus was on the earth here? No. We were in his mind. Who had delivered us, past tense, from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood. Remember earlier we were talking about God the Savior being our Redeemer, in whom we have redemption through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Get this one. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by Him are all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by Him and for Him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. Now, Jesus is equal with God. John 5, 18, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal with God. Philippians 2, 5, and 11. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself in no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant. That's when he became man and was made in the likeness of men. We'll get in that a little bit later uh, next week. Only way God could come to the earth was be like a man. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. He was fashioned as a man, but all God. Why? He was tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin. That's why it's so important that the virgin birth be explained. Because Jesus was sinless. The virgin birth declares him not only sinless, but he's God in human form coming to the earth to take care of our sin, who being in the form of God, thought it not uh, robbery to be equal with God. So here he was. He is a fulfillment of what God planned from the beginning that he would send himself. We'll see this next week in Genesis 22, if you want to read in your notes later. He, he sent himself as a promise to Abraham that he would come himself as the lamb. And then we see John the Baptist who says, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away Dana stone sin. And folks, that's what you have to see. You have to see that Jesus is God that taketh away your sin to the point 
that you can go to heaven just like you are. Christ is God.